we go. Cover one crew. What is going on, Chris Charles? Back again. Hope everybody's awesome out there. I'm doing wonderful. It is a game day, baby. Week four, Thursday night football. The Miami Dolphins and the Cincinnati Bengals take their talents and face off against each other in what should be a very entertaining contest, to say the least. There is a lot of fantasy football implications in this contest to speak of. So, I mean, outside of that, we're going to pick the score in this game like we do every single Thursday. I've been taking it on the chin for point spread, but hopefully we can turn it around this week. So let's dive into the good stuff and, and let's cover this game, baby. So starting off with those Miami Dolphins, they're coming off a monster victory versus our Buffalo Bills, 21 to 19. And I mean, there's a lot of things we can say about what happened in that contest, whether it be refing, whether it be, you know, the Buffalo Bills not taking advantage of every opportunity. We got to give credit where it's due. And Miami did play very well in that heat. It was crazy uh, weather, man. The heat was over 100 degrees. Unbelievable. And Miami was able to overcome. Obviously, home field advantage is going to be key for for these Miami Dolphins, or was key, I should say, for the Dolphins in that contest where they did uh, get the victory over the Buffalo Bills. Now they're taking their talents to Cincinnati on the road on a short week. They're dealing with some injuries. And I mean, to a tag of low, we'll start off with that one. He's dealing with the injury. They're saying it's back and hip. We know it's a concussion. I don't care what anybody says. That man stumbled on the field like he was out cold and walking out cold. So you can say it whatever you want. We know to a tag of Aloha was definitely concussed. I don't care what the league says, but anyway, he's dealing with an injury. We got Jalen Waddle dealing with a groin issue. He is likely going to suit up. He's got the questionable tag right now, so it, watch it uh, unless other some ailment does develop that he uh, you know can't go on Thursday Night Football. He should still be a good go right now. Cedric Wilson still dealing with a toe injury. Still got him on the list, though, for this contest. But outside of that, I mean, let's dive into the total plays. 167 for 1,117 yards right now. So this offense is moving pretty decently given the fact they're still under 200 plays on offense in three weeks. So it is very good how they are producing. They are becoming very efficient in that regard. The rushing did pick up last week. Uh, they got two rushing touchdowns from Chase Edmonds. So, I mean, are they going to be the running team? I think it's important that they start figuring that out. But will they do that in this contest? It is very possible because they want to protect Tua Tagovailoa from getting any more hurt uh, than he already is if it is a back and hit. We know it's not. But, I mean, they got to start running the ball a little bit more. Raheem Mosser getting sprinkled in. Chase Edmonds, they got to do a little bit more of a commitment to this ground game so that teams will respect the run and that will only do favors for Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill that much more. Passing yards, eight, 874 with eight touchdowns, two interceptions. Two has been very good. He's been efficient overall. You can't say any real high negatives in his game when he did come back last week from the concussion. I mean, I'm going to keep harping on it, but whatever. He came, he came back in that contest, and he looked good enough. He wasn't, you know, lighting the stat sheet on fire, but he found the opportunities in the defense where there were holes. The cover twos were open. J uh, uh, Jalen Waddle, excuse me, he found his uh, the seam right up the middle deep. So you you know they're going to do the deep shots against the Bengals this week as well. We we already heard Tyreek Hill is wanting to go after Eli Apple, so you got to know that's going to be a very big focal point in this contest for uh, Tyreek Hill, given the fact that Jalen Waddle is also playing hurt. Perhaps they give him a little bit of a decoy role this week, let him rest up just a little bit, and this will be Tyreek Hill day. So I, I got to say that for the caveat overall. Field goals two for two. They're not kicking a lot of field goals because they're scoring deep touchdowns for the most part, plus two in uh, turnover ratio, and you got to like that for these Miami Dolphins. So when we talk in the little start sit, you got a mid-risk on Tua Tagovailoa this week simply because we don't know how healthy he is. We really don't. Could they be masking? I'm, I'm being facetious, but I mean... I, I believe it was a concussion. I think everybody would agree with me in that sense that there's no way that that was a back and a hip. He was lights out, knocked out, and got up and was walking concussed. However, if he is still uh, you know possessing any sort of concussion symptoms, they're saying it's not, so let's go with what we know. They're saying it's a back and they're saying it's a hip. They're saying he's pretty stiff. So for me, it's a mid-level risk for him this week because, I mean, okay, again, he looks efficient. He's taking what the defense has given him for the most part. And Cincinnati Bengal defense has been decently good against the pass so far this year. So we'll see. I'm, I'm still putting a mid-level risk on Tua this week. If you have other options, I would definitely consider it. I'm not saying Tua is a 
complete sit this week, but I would definitely look in other options if you have them at the quarterback position. Chase Edmonds, again, mid-level risk just because there's not a commitment to this run game. Same with Raheem Mossard, high risk. You cannot necessarily trust this run game whatsoever. Will they have opportunities if they get in the red zone inside the 10 like we saw last week? Hand it off to Chase Edmonds and he can possibly find touchdowns to uplift his fantasy day. Absolutely. Freaking lootly. 28 points right now in three weeks is not terrible, but it is very inconsistent right now from Chase Edmonds. It's very hard to trust, but I am going to put a mid level risk on him this week because I think they like what they saw last week against the Bills. Even though the Bills were very much injured, I, I still believe that they liked what they saw, so they may give more opportunities to Chase Edmonds this week on Thursday Night Football, and I don't hate it. Raheem Mostert is the high risk right now because, I mean, outside of, you know, high, uh, you know, uh, explosive playability, potentially running for and galloping for a touchdown he's still going to be a high risk at this point until they figure it out perhaps it is going to be more of a 50 50 split as the year goes on but he is still a high risk for me Tyree Kill gets a stud start of the week for me on Thursday Night Football for these Dolphins because he, he's calling out Eli Apple you know man they kind of went away you know not enough credit is given to uh, Kyer Elam uh, for the Buffalo Bills he shut down Tyree Kill when he was on him last week this is the week that Tyreek's going to be like, no, it's my turn, Jalen. And with, like I said, Jalen Waddle dealing with that groin injury, still giving Jalen the low risk because if he does play, it's Jalen Waddle, man. He's going to make plays regardless. Of, uh, but it, there could be a potential bust factor, excuse me, for you know Jalen Waddle this week if he is going to be that quote-unquote decoy. I'm not saying it's going to be you know 100% come to fruition. He may get like three to four catches in this contest depending on his health. If he is a good to go, then that's that's why I'm putting the low risk. I'm betting on the fact that he is good to go. He's going to play in this contest, uh, you know, unscathed in, in, the, in that respect. But I think the stud start's got to go to Tyreek. This is Tyreek Hill week. He loves prime time. He loves Thursday night football, and you're going to be smiling ear to ear. Obviously, you're going to be starting Tyreek and Jalen Waddle regardless. Uh, Cedric Wilson, high risk, dealing with that injury. He may not suit up. He does draw the, uh, the questionable tag, but until we see more out of him on the field, he is definitely a high risk play for me. Mike Gusecki gets a little bit of a low upside tick this week, so that goes again with the fact of Jalen Waddle's groin injury. So if he is, in fact, that decoy, they will be looking at... Uh, in another direction and Mike Gusecki could be that guy we could see a touchdown uh, happen for Gusecki this week but again it is high risk with very low upside so I mean it's a big risk to play Mike Gusecki at this point he hasn't done near enough for us to trust him and with Tua Hurton as well we could see more check downs go to his tight end so I mean it is one of those things if you're really stuck at the tight end position it's a cautionary tale for a start for a Mike Gusecki but as of today it's Tyreek Hill Jalen Waddle and then the mid-risk level level plays for the other individuals on these Miami Dolphins man Cincinnati Bengals we know the cast of characters they're pretty much healthy right now T Higgins off the injury report which is very good news uh I mean the the Cincinnati Bengals they look good last week man they rebounded after starting 0-2 they beat up on those New York Jets 27 to 12 and they were pretty much dominant in that contest I thought it was going to be a lot closer than a touchdown spread it was but they actually came out and they definitely played their butts off man total offensive plays two 27 for 1103 so this offense is moving in the right direction we know they're a good team we know this is a good offense the problem has been from that offensive line that we have seen so far they ponied up a boatload of money for this offensive line to protect protect Joe Burrow and so far he spent more time on his back than some you know street walkers but I mean that's for another day but I mean this is this is a big problem man they gotta fix the offensive line troubles and keep Joe Burrow protected half the problem is the Joe Mixon effect the fact that they're not getting enough productivity from this run game we see 87 carries 291 and zero rushing touchdowns in three weeks for this Cincinnati Bengals uh, running game man Joe Mixon Mixon's always done this. He's had the volume. We trust the volume in fantasy football, but I mean, he does disappear from time to time, and this is one of the problems when you draft a guy like Joe Mixon this high in drafts. He does disappoint you from time to time. This could be a game where they do lean on the ground game just a little bit more because it is a short week because they don't want to be sacked. Miami's defense is extremely good at blitzing the quarterback, and we saw it with Josh Allen last week. There was a lot of times where Josh was uh, you know, running for his life. They do blitz it's very well. That safety they have in Holland, he is an absolute beast. And I'm telling y'all, he is making a case for himself to be one of the best safeties in the entire NFL. 
When it comes to the passing yards, 725, six touchdowns to four interceptions for Joey B right now. And those four picks came in that first contest. I get it. He looked better this past week. I believe he threw three inter or three touchdowns this past week versus the Jets. And they just needed that get-right game. That's exactly what Cincinnati needed, and they got it. So now at home against these Dolphins, this is a high, you know, high media praise contest between two teams that are uh, you know up on, on the upper echelons in this league for sure. But, I mean, we got we know what they're going to do in the pass game. They just got to get this run game going just a little bit more. Field goal 7 of 9, turnover ratio minus 1 right now. Like I said, they beat the Jets to get their first victory last week. And when we talk about who we're playing this week, Joey B is that low risk. I almost had him as a stud start this week. My only problem is, like I said, this offensive line not being able to protect Joe Burrow as good as we had hoped. And the unbelievable uh, blitzing aspect from the Miami defense. They blitz so much. They are one of the highest highest blitzing teams in the entire NFL and you know they're going to be pinning their ears back and going after Joey B in this contest because they're going to believe that they can get to him especially with how poor this offensive line has played mid-level risk for a Joe Mixon this week I wanted to put low risk we do know he's going to get the volume, okay? And that's the key here. Volume is definitely key. We know he's going to get a good level of uh, rushing attempts. I'm just I'm I'm a little worried because if he's not getting you in the end zone, you're gonna have another you know subpar showing ten to twelve points. Yes, that's a hit on the uh, uh, on the consistency rates, but it's not necessarily helping your team get ahead early in a week. So for me, it's mid level risk. You obviously got to start Joe Mixon this week as well, unless you do have better options, which I highly doubt because he was a first round pick or a late uh, early second round pick uh, for Joe Mixon. So I mean, you definitely got to plug and play him. Thirty three points is not terrible in three games gives you an average of over 10 points per game but you do want to see him finally get into that end zone give you that high upside that you hope you would get from a Joe Mixon this year uh P Ryan I mean come on man he just vultured a touchdown everyone's going to the waiver wire picking up his services 19.8 points get out of town high risk man you're never going to be playing <laughs> Sam G P Ryan come on let's not kid ourselves Jamar Chase he got locked up last week by Sauce Gardner he does save his day with a touchdown but he got locked up first time we've seen this in a long time from Jamar Chase having an off day because of superb coverage that he could not necessarily break from Sauce Gardner is a stud like I was talking about Elam you got to talk about Sauce Gardner because he put on a show defensively this is the week that you know okay fine he's going up against Xavier Howard this week but Xavier Howard is somewhat beatable he is also dealing with an injury I still believe a lot in Xavier Howard I think he is one of the better defensive backs in the entire NFL this will be a very good show if you are one of those uh, individuals who like to watch matchup play Jamar Chase versus Howard should be another dandy for you to watch but I think he gets off that schneid from last week he puts up a massive contest in prime time he's gonna want to go blow for blow with Tyreek you can do one I can do one that's kind of how you feel this contest might go on Thursday night football T Higgins gets a low risk play for me this week also I think they do feed him with lesser coverage because the dictated uh, coverage is gonna go to Jamar Chase perhaps we see a little bit more double teams but T Higgins is that safe reliable play wide receiver too if you have him as your wide receiver too you're gonna plug and play him as well this week Tyler Boyd does get the good upside for me because we could see a lot of uh, uh, blitzing like I said from the Dolphins perhaps we see you know Howard get the best of Jamar Chase for a little bit of this contest look what Tyler Boyd was able to do last week versus the Jets he absolutely cooked them because lesser coverage coming his way this is the good upside you're going to get now, I think, ROI for the rest of the season for a Tyler Boyd. Yes, it's going to be inconsistent from time to time, but you're going to see when there's top dog coverage going up against uh, Chase and Higgins, you're going to see Tyler Boyd make some plays. Good upside this week. If you have him in your flex, take him out of the flex on Thursday night footballs, uh, Thursday night football contest, I should say, but... He is a good play, man. I, I think that this trio of wide receivers will be able to put up points like we're seeing. 41.9, 31.6, 34.5. This is very good productivity. And now that we see hopefully Joey B is back, you know, to regular standards of what we know he can do, then I think he's going to be able to support all three of these wide receivers with very good reliability. Touchdown upside is going to be key for Tyler Boyd. I think he could possibly get another one in this contest because of weaker coverage. Hayden Hurst does get the high-risk play 
play for me, only 13.2 points. His target share has been, you know, decently good for tight ends uh, in this offense right now. But now with Tyler Boyd getting a little bit more, uh, you know, lesser coverage, like I said, we're seeing Hayden Hurst getting some attention. Now it's pulling the coverage away from Tyler Boyd as well, which also helps the good upside argument for me. So if you have, uh, you know, Boyd for that flex option, quote unquote, but never play, play anybody in your flex on Thursday night, you know, keep the flexes open. But you know what I'm saying? When it comes to playing him in the flex, Tyler Boyd could be that guy that you can uh, rely upon maybe, you know, one out of three weeks. Uh, and this could be another week where Tyler Boyd gets a little bit of sprinkles, but I'm definitely going with Chase and Higgins as my starts along with Joey B and Joe Mixon. You got to plug him in your lineup because, they're, I mean, you, you have no choice really at this point. But let's talk about this game on Thursday night, man. We got the Miami Dolphins. They are the underdog 3.5 points in favor of those Cincinnati Bengals. And like I basically covered the entire contest right now, the Miami Dolphins defense hat did impress me versus the Buffalo Bills. No question about it, man. They were actually very, very impressive in that blitz scheme. I did not think that they would be able to do what they did, but we got to put the caveat on the fact that the Buffalo Bills offensive line was uh, uh, injured, hampered with injuries. Cincinnati Bengals defense or offensive line has not been very good. So I really do expect them to put a lot of pressure on Joey B, make him force the issue, force the passes. Hopefully it'll create turnovers for this offense. While Miami is going to try to, you know, extend plays with Tyreek Hill, go deep, make him honest. And I do believe we could see a little bit more running from the Dolphins this week to try to keep this defense honest, to try to make the play action pass work just a little bit more. So for my score, I do got the Cincinnati or Bengals coming covering 28 to 21 because I mean four points I think at home they're definitely going to want to even out to two and two I don't want to don't think they're going to be you know uh, allowing Miami to come into their house and steal this victory I do believe four points is very much doable I haven't been great on the spread so I mean but hey I, I've been picking the winners pretty much decently so I mean the Thursday night football has been good to me so far but I think that the Cincinnati Bengals do have enough in the in their tank to get past these Miami Dolphins because I do think Miami Miami still is a little bit overrated right now. Everybody's just loving the fact of how high octane and how speedy they are. I just, I still think they're uh, 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 quite a bit overrated, and I think they come back down to earth just a little bit. Beating the Buffalo Bills with an injured roster, I mean, in the heat, there were so many circumstances that came with that. If the Bills play the Dolphins this week, we would all be picking the Bills again to win. So come on, let's see what Miami, or Miami got on the road in Cincinnati, but I do got the Bengals this week to win. So there you have it. That is week four Thursday night football between the Cincinnati Bengals and those Miami Dolphins. Give you a little start sit advice. Hopefully you guys plug and play the right players. Hopefully you're doing well so far this season. I am doing fabulous, man. I am basically 3-0 and in every league except one. I'm 2-1, and so you gotta love what is going on in fantasy football for us this year. Keep following me, and I'll definitely continue this advice, but nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts, who are you guys starting this week? Who do you guys like this week? Throw them in the comments. Any start sit questions, throw them in the comments. I'll definitely get back to you, but we'll see you next time. I am out.